So you may have seen this chicken genetics calculator and thought it looked like a fun thing to play with, or perhaps you're interested in genetics. I'm Emma, and I know for sure I am. This is probably like my favorite toy. It's so much fun to play with, and you can get so many different crosses. You can see like all the possible offspring, and it's super cool. So how do you use it? And what do all these letters mean? I know when I first started, it was super overwhelming. So today, I'm just going to kind of go through, explain how to use this calculator, and maybe give a brief def definition on how each of these genes work and what they are. So first off, we'll start with the E locus. This is like the base of your bird. So one thing before we start talking about all of the genes on the E locus, I want to add that the plus symbol after you see... For example, if you look into the wild type or duck wing section, you see there's little e plus. The plus symbol is assigned to every mutation that is naturally found in red jungle fowl. So that's what that little plus means, is it's like a naturally occurring mutation in red jungle fowl. Okay, so the top here we have little e, little e, and that is duck wing, also known as wild type. And that's an extremely common color, you know, it's used, you know, you, ha you can have gold duck wing, silver duck wing, creole, etc. If you think silver Americanas, those are silver duck wings, silver duck wing OEGBs, old English game bantams, gold old English game bantams, etc. Leg bars, cream leg bars, those are duck wing. A lot of Easter eggers, hatchery Easter eggers in particular, often have a duck wing base. And then if we go down to the next homozygous pair, which is Biggie Biggie, that is extended black. It's a dominant gene, and it's basically black. Most lavender birds are extended black, etc. Um, the next homozygous pair I can see is Birchin. And Birchin is also a dominant gene. If you think, a lot of different breeds have this, but I know Bantam Cochins, Birchin is an accepted variety. So you have Silver Birchin Bantam Cochins, often just called Birchin Bantam Cochins. And then Lemon Blue is diluted Gold Birchin. And gold birchin is also called brown red. Um, why? I don't know. If Technically, it, the color is called brown red, but what it really is is gold birchin. The next homozygous pair is down here. It's Wheaton, think Wheaton Americanas, Blue Wheaton, Wheaton Malays, Ma Marins. Um, and then the next is Partridge, Partridge Silkies. Brahmas, yeah. And then in between all these homozygous pairs, you can see a bunch of different combinations. Um, these are all heterozygous. I'll name a few, like this top one under the duck wing section. At the top is duck wing split to um, partridge. And split is a common word in the chicken world used to mean heterozygous. I tend to say heterozygous more often, but split is a common word. Heterozygous basically means you don't have two of the same genes in a pair. Um, and then when you do, it's called homozygous. So moving off from the E locus, we have the Columbian. It's Columbian is a dominant gene. It is a eumelanin restrictor so it restricts eumelanin which is black pigment to the hackles and the tail think columbian wyandotte columbian plymouth rock columbian is also a gene which contributes to lacing so if any of y'all have laced wyandots laced cochins and so on next we have dirk brown which works kind of like Colombian, and 
and it's a black restrictor gene. And then next down, we have melanotonic, melanized. It is also a gene that contributes to lacing. And next here, we have pattern gene, which once again contributes to lacing. So see if we have that, that, double laced, whoops. See, you can see at the top, we can see the bird we just created. We created a gold laced, single combed, but it's only incomplete laced, okay? So don't be confused. It's not fully laced yet. Sorry, I had to turn my screen. But to get it to fully laced next, we want to add partridge. And you can kind of see where we're getting here. So we now have a laced bird, and if we go back to duck wing, we'll get back to an incompletely laced bird. This took me a while to get. The genes that you need to get a laced bird, lacing is actually way more complicated than you think it would be. It takes partridge, Colombian, melanotonic, and pattern gene to get a laced bird. And so we wanted it silver laced, you know, we'd go down here and we change that to silver. I'm gonna talk about the silver gene in a minute, but first I'm going to move on. Pattern gene is a gene which contributes to lacing, as I demonstrated above, and you can see in our rooster that we have created. So charcoal is a melanizer. It works kind of like the melatonin above in that it enhances black pigment, but it's not nearly as effective. It's also an incomplete recessive gene, so it takes two copies for it to be expressed, unlike the melatonic gene. Sorry if I sound a bit different. I had to go do some stuff, so I'm in a different area right now. So next we have dilute. Dilute is a red and gold dilution gene. It dilutes red and gold, basically. That's it. It's a dominant gold dilute gene. Next, we have the inhibitor of gold gene, and it basically it dilutes gold. So it dilutes gold to lemon. And it's a recessive gene. So it's a recessive gold dilute gene inhibitor. And next, we have champagne blonde, which is a dominant gold dilute gene. Finally, we have silver. And silver is a sex-linked gene. There is a few mutations on this locus. There's gold and silver, and then there's also sex-linked albinism. That's, like, really rare. So generally, we don't talk about it. I'm not really going to go into sex-linked albinism. I'm just going to talk about capital S and little s plus. So silver is a dominant sex link gene. You see, we can turn our gold laced bird up the top to a silver laced. If you see in the top left corner how our bird is switching colors. Silver is dominant over gold. Males can carry up to two copies of the silver gene. So males can be split to gold, they can be all gold, or they can be all silver. Whereas if we come over to the female side, we can see down here that they only have two possible. They can either be gold or they can be silver. They can't be silver hiding gold. And this is how sex links work. If you've ever heard of silver and gold sex links, for example, if we crossed a silver laced Wyandotte, hen to a gold laced Hawaiian dot rooster, we'd end up with silver sons and gold daughters. The reason for this is if the father is gold, we know he's not hiding any other genes. He can only pass on gold genes. And if the female silver, she only has one slot on this locus because the silver gene is carried on the Z chromosome. And males have two Z chromosomes. There's ZZ, whereas females have one Z and one W. So if you're female, 
it has a silver jean. She can't be hiding anything underneath that. Same if she has a gold jean. She can't be hiding anything underneath that because that's the only jean she can have on that locus. Okay, so I just created a silver hen and a gold lace rooster. If we cross these two together, we'd end up with silver males and gold females. The reason for this is because the silver is carried on the Z chromosome. And so when she passes her only Z chromosome to all of her sons, they inherit that dominant silver gene. And that will override the gold gene that their dad gave them. Whereas the daughters, the only Z gene they get is from their dad. And so since their dad can only pass off gold on his Z, they have to be gold. And their mom can't give them a dominant gene to cover that up. Okay, so after silver, we have another sex-linked gene. This is barring. Again, there's technically a few mutations on this locus, but we really only talk about the Big B and Little B+. Plus. We don't really generally talk about the Big B with the SD exponent. So barring, again, is a sex-linked gene carried on the Z chromosome. So males can have up to two copies, whereas females can only have one. Barring is a dominant gene, so no matter what, it will be expressed. Unless you have a dominant white on the bird, and that generally you can still see the barring. It's called ghost barring, and you can see faint white stripes. Or you have homozygous recessive white. Recessive white covers up all patterns underneath. So, I'm going to reset. So, this is a male with a single copy. If we have a male with two copies, generally, he'll have more white. Barring, it's actually a co-dominant gene. And that means it takes two genes for it to be expressed to its fullest extent. One gene you'll get like halfway there, and then two you get the full extent. However, because it's a sex link gene, having it to its fullest extent is only possible in males. The way barring works is as the feather grows, it restricts the pigment on and off as it's growing out. So you end up with these sort of stripes on the feather. And when you have two copies of the gene, it restricts the pigment for longer, leading to wider white bars. And that's why if you look to particularly less so in the, the more hatchery varieties, but if you look at like Heritage Barred Plymouth Rocks, you will notice like there's a very significant difference between the males and the females. The barring's crisper, so it's easier to see, but the males are much lighter and they have a lot wider white bars. And barring is cool because you can use barring to make black sex links. Black sex links is when you cross a barred female to a non-barred male. Because barring is carried on the Z chromosome and it's a dominant gene, the female will pass her barring to all of her sons, but she will not pass to any of her daughters, meaning that any males will be barred and non-males females will not and you can even tell as chicks because when bar you have barred birds as chicks they have like a yellow or white dot on their head a lot of the times they look kind of like penguins is like what a lot of people describe it as the white dot on the head is the telltale factor that you have a barred bird after barring we have a black dilution gene called chocolate. If you've heard of chocolate English Orpingtons, those are extremely common. I've also seen people doing project chocolate Americanas. And chocolate is a recessive black dilute gene, and it turns black pigment into like a chocolatey brown color. Next, we have dominant white. And dominant white is like I was talking earlier. I will, I am going to admit right now, 
I'm not going to go too in detail with Dominant White, as I know the basic Big Eye slash Big Eye, but I don't know all the other mutations on this locust. I'm still learning. I have a vague understanding, but not enough to explain it. So I'm just going to stick with the little I plus and the capital I. So Dominant White restricts, it covers up black pigment. Ghost barring is obtained using Dominant White. And some people get confused um, between Dominant White and Recessive White. Uh, but they do work slightly differently, even though they are both white. If you've ever heard of paint silkies, dominant white is what paint silkies use. Dominant white tends to allow leakage to come through, and that's what paint is. It generally doesn't mask patterns all the way, even though it's what it attempts to do. It's not fully effective. And then blue. BBS Genetics. Blue, black, and splash. Super cool. Super easy to understand. Super fun to play with. Blue is a co-dominant gene. When you have one copy, you have blue. When you have two copies, you have splash. When you have no copies, you have black. Most birds have a blue and black variety. Splash generally isn't accepted, but it does exist because it, it has to if you're working with blue. It just, for some reason, they're not accepted. You also can have, like, blue, black, and splash wheat in. For Americanas, that's just what I talk about. It's my go-to. It's my favorite breed. So that's just what I'm going to talk about. You have wheat and Americanas and blue wheat and Americanas. Both are accepted. You can also have splash wheat and Americana, so those aren't actually accepted into the APA. And then you also have blue and black Americanas, not wheat in. Uh, again, splash isn't accepted, but they exist. They have to. Wheat in is a sexually dimorphic color pattern. So the females tend to be like a creamy color, while the males tend to have like lots of red and wheat in. They, their chests are black. Um, blue wheat in their chests are blue, and splash wheat in their chests are splash. And the females, the only way you can really tell the three different varieties apart is by the end of their tail. Wheat in Americanas will have black feathers on their tail. Blue wheat will have blue, and splash will have splash. Because there's only like a small strip of feathers, it's often really difficult to tell the difference between blue and splash we in female Americanas. Next we have modeling. It basically gives you white tips of the feathers and gives you kind of a weird white splotchy pattern. It's a recessive gene. Next we have recessive white. Most white varieties of breeds use recessive white. The exception of common breeds that I can tell you is white leggerns. They use dominant white. And recessive white basically it's a recessive gene. So when you have two copies of recessive white, it masks all the other colors underneath. Me personally, I have a recessive white Americana. And for all I know, she could have who knows what underneath. And that's why it can be kind of difficult to work with white birds especially if you're breeding them into your line to get a certain desirable trait um say you're working on a different project and you need to breed in white birds for some reason it can be really annoying because you don't know what the white birds are carrying underneath and it can be super frustrating next we have lavender lavender is a black dilute gene it's a recessive gene and it dilutes black to lavender when you have two copies so if you see now we have a lavender barred bird in this top left corner i just wanted to say show that real quick what is really interesting about lavender in particular is lavender and blue can be present on the same bird so those are really all the feather pattern and color Genes under here, we have all of our other genes for leg, comb type, 
skin color, you know, facial features, what kind of feathers, like silkies and frizzles. AR is autosomal red. You can see it really says it right here. And that's if, you know, if you know like a lot of young cockerels or roosters, they have like those red wing patches. That's autosomal red. The H is what determines silky feathering. Silky feathering is a recessive gene. This right here is frizzling. Frizzling is a codominant gene. When you have one F, you have a frizzle, and if you have two, you have a frazzle. Frazzles tend to have other ish health issues, such as enlarged organs and extremely brittle feathers, meaning it tends to be kind of inhumane to intentionally breed frazzles. And that's why most responsible breeders will never breed a frizzle to a frizzle, because that cross yields 25% frazzles. NA is naked necks. Naked neck is also a codominant gene. When you have this, you tend to have, I'm not too familiar with naked neck terminology, but I believe it's called bow tie. Basically, you have a, the neck bit that's naked, but the whole neck isn't fully naked. And then when you have two copies, it's fully naked. Hang on, let me see. Does it say up here what it's called? No, but basically it won't be, I believe the crop is not naked. I'm not sure. I don't personally, naked necks aren't my thing, so I couldn't tell you. But I can tell you that the homozygous naked neck will be more naked necked than the heterozygous. HF is henny feathering, and if you know Seabrights, some game fowl, good quality Seabrights should have henny feathering. And that's basically where the males don't have male specific feathering, such as saddle feathers, male saddle feathers, like the pointy. They are feathered the same way as a female. Next, we have creeper gene. If y'all know, like, ear tufts and araucanas, when you have one copy, you have ear tufts, and when you have two copies, the egg dies in the shell. It's kind of the same with creep. When you have one copy, you have chickens with extremely short legs. And if you have two copies, that's lethal. Next, we have foot feathering. Foot feathering is a dominant gene causes feathers on the feet, you know, cochins, brahmas, banth cochins, faverals, silkies, sultans, I could go on and on and on. And then vulture hawks, um, you know, English type brahmas, ducles, ducles, I don't know, I don't talk to very many chicken people, someone tell me how you pronounce the D apostrophe U C C L E. I read it as Ducal. Ducal. But I think it's like Ducle. Ducla. No, not Ducla. That's like what dogs have. Ducle. But vulture hawks. Next we have MB, Muffs and Beard, Dominant Gene, Americanas, a lot of Easter Eggers, Silky, Polish. Bearded silkies, bearded polish. Let me clarify. Sultans, Houdans, Favrals, a lot of breeds. Next we have Cress. Cress are super cool. They're, it's a dominant gene. Leg bar, silkies, polish, Sultans, Houdans. List goes on and on. Next we have Ear Tufts, Arcanas. Again, it's a semi lethal gene. Well, it is lethal. But one copy, you get ear tufts, two copies, chick dies and sell. And then we have rumpless araucanas again. American type araucanas. Australian type araucanas are very different, for example. Fibromelanistic causes dark skin. Over here, we have white skin and yellow. 
So, see, now we have yellow skin. Now we have white skin. Yellow skin is recessive. White skin is dominant. You can see as we're changing, now we have yellow skin. The image doesn't really change, unfortunately. Next, we have the ID, which is a melanin inhibitor, and it causes, like, light shanks. Next, we have polydactyly, poly and that's what controls number of toes. For example, if we have this, there should be five toes on each foot. And there's quite a few breeds which actually have five toes. You know, I can name Salmon Faverols, Dorkings, Silkies, and I can go on. And it's really cool. And then this is the blue egg gene. Ocyan is the blue pigment. And... Think Araucanas, Leg Bars, Americanas, Easter Eggers, and yeah. this is Bretacomless. It's really interesting. You can basically make it so they don't have a comb. Like this photo down here. If you see, that's what it would look like. It's a sketch, unfortunately, but it's cool. It's a recessive gene. So then we have duplex comb. It's a dominant gene. It basically, it looks like devil horns. And it's seen in, like, La Fletch. And it's really cool comb type. Really cool. And then next we're getting down to the common ones, which is Rose and P. Rose, you know, Seabrights, Wyandots, whatever. And then, you know, if you combine it with a bee comb, you get a walnut comb. Um, and that's the kind of comb type silkies have. And now as we get to the end of this, you may be wondering, well, where is the single comb? Well, single comb isn't actually a gene within itself. Single, single comb is like the base. So, you get a single comb when... Basically, all of these other genes are turned off. So, if we look at our female, she has a single comb. And you can see the P, the rose, the duplex, the bretacomalus, they're all turned off. And so, that's pretty much it when it comes to the gene stuff. Next, we can talk about how to actually use the calculator. So, what you'll want to do is you'll want to plug in your bird. I'll make... Uh, Birchin. Okay, so I've basically created two birds here. I haven't created any particular breed. I basically just threw together some hen and a rooster. And so what we're going to do after we have these birds is we want to go to our Punnett Square. And you want to click the Punnett Square button and it'll bring up a new thing. And I have short time short genotype notation on and it basically just means that it only really shows me the genes that are actually affecting the bird's pattern so i could have it so it shows the full genotype and i just click on that square again but that's a lot and most of those don't affect me because they're all turned off so i usually just go short genotype because then i can see what i'm working with and if I wanted, I could actually pick this male. And I could see. And so if you wanted to check out wine breeding. You could. Now I can see this. So I crossed that son back to his mother. And I have these birds. And then maybe I want to continue... Again, with, you can see all the different options. I went one bird more, and suddenly there's how many different options instead of just two. So you can see how it can get really intense. I'll continue with this male. Planet square. And then you can look 
all the possible offspring. And there's a lot of them. And you can see why I use short-term genotype mutation. Because if I had to sort through the genotype of all these different birds to decide which bird I want to continue with, that would be too much. And there's also this site is really cool. Because you can look at the phenotypes of these birds. You can look at all this stuff. Look, if I were to click calculate, I think it should fill in. Yeah, there we go. Let's see all that stuff. And we can look at, like, this tree. And we can look at all the females. We can look at all the males. And really, the possibilities are endless. And you could, if you wanted, you could even add some genes. So maybe there's a gene that I know exists, but it's not on here. Um, or I'm trying to test out. You can add genes. So, autosomal basically means it's just not carried on the sex chromosome. And sex linked means it is. So, maybe I'm going to create a gene that stands for rainbow. And it's a recessive gene that makes it lay rainbow eggs. Now, this is not real. And obviously, I'm not being serious. Like, you can't just create a gene. But if there's a gene out there that you know exists, and I don't expect any of us to be at that level, but you can quick add a gene. And if I say this, look, single comb rainbow eggs. And it was super easy. So that was the Kippen Jungle Chicken Genetics Calculator. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks for watching.